Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to use the soft body physics again, and we're going to use it to use, say, the effect of inflating a balloon. Maybe you're making a hot air balloon in the scene, and you want it to give some realism to the scene. Well, already this has some effects of the wind taking shape when you look at it closely like this, right? So this feels, it kind of feels like a cloth, though there's no cloth in this scene. This is all strictly soft body physics doing this and a wind object as well. So I'm going to show you some details about how to set this up, but I'll show you the inflation effect, you know, inflating it here just by changing the wind here. If I just uh, gradually, let's just do this. I have some noise in here. I'm going to go through the whole setup here in a second so you'll be able to see it. But down here at this uh, first frame, maybe I'll set this strength down to zero and I'll press I and give it a keyframe like that and then maybe up here at frame 80 I'll make it 65 and I'll press I and give it a keyframe and then maybe I'll make it up a little bit higher up here and then maybe I'll even crank it up some more maybe 100 and press I and give it a keyframe so basically in that case what I'm doing is I'm just changing the parameters of the wind object in here and then when I run the animation, it has to run once all the way through. So let's see. So from the beginning, it's not doing anything, but let's see. See, it kind of gradually fills itself up like that. Maybe we need a little more strength at the end on this last one. So I'm going to escape this, up arrow key to the last keyframe, crank it up a little bit more at that end, press I again. I've reset the keyframe now. And then let me run Alt A. All right, so there it is at the beginning. And is it increasing? There, it fills it up. All right. So that's kind of the effect that they're going for. And I'm going to step through it and show you how I did it. All right. So now, I'm just going to get rid of this object. Why not? Because I don't need it. And then this object, we're just going to. Mm -hmm. You know how it is. The way I like to work. I'm going to just start from scratch. All right. So now it's basically all I have is the shape of this object. And I'm even going to get rid of this vertex group called stretch. So there's nothing to it. So I'll go into edit mode. And notice I have this button deselected here so I can see my vertices on the other side. So what I had done is I'll press Control i because those are the inverse of what I wanted. I basically have just these vertices selected with the object like that. And with those, I want to make those a soft body physics effect all right so I need to make a vertex group for just those only and for starters and I'll make those a weight of zero and I'll assign them like that so that means they're free to float completely and then I'm gonna press control I to get the inverse and then I'm gonna change that to a weight of one and I'll assign those and then over here I'm gonna verify what it looks like in in uh, weight paint mode and there they are. So the blue is nothing set and the red is just fixed in place. So I know it's I'm good to go. Alright, so now with this group set, well actually one other thing I'll do. I'll just name it stretch. Maybe balloon. Like that. Alright. So then I need to come back in here for this object and go over to the physics button right here and make it a soft body object. And we're going to use a lot of defaults except I need to use this vertex group. So under this soft body goal here, I got to grab the vertex group called balloon. And I want to make sure it uses 100% of that goal for those vertices. And then these edges, I'm also going to crank up these spring strength up like that. I think that's all I need to do for this particular one. Yeah, that should work good enough. Alright, so look, let's go down here and press Alt A and see what happens. The uh, first time, it usually has to run one cycle through, so I'm going to re-click down here and now you're going to see the effect taking place. Alright, it's just kind of bouncing on itself. Alright, so under the weight of gravity, those move, but since they're supported by everything else around it, nothing else much is happening. Let me see if we can change this lighting just a little bit here. Let me move this. Which light is this in this scene? So that one here, let me move this over and maybe move this one down just a little bit. Maybe have the light coming more from an angle 
R X just like that so we can see it a little bit better I'm gonna press Alt A again okay there you can see it a little bit better like this alright so so that's one thing and then the next thing is that I need to have wind in the scene then the important thing to remember is that notice here I happen to have been on this layer a layer 11 Oh well, no, that's on that light. So where is this? I want to know where this is. All right, that's on layer one. So I want to make sure that I'm on layer one. That's my last active layer. So before I put the wind into the scene. So I'm going to just put it really anywhere. And I'll just press Shift A and add a force field. And I'll add wind to the scene. And basically I was making it blow upward at like a 45 degree angle. So I'll rotate this on X or no, Y a little bit, R, Y, and I'll just rotate a little bit, and there's where I was giving it the wind. I'll just do it like this. Now notice, this wind position doesn't really matter where it's located in the scene. In fact, if I run Alt-A, let's see if we can actually see it working right now. So it is working. You can see it's helping lift that up at an angle even like that based on where that wind is located there but what I mean it doesn't mean matter where it's located it doesn't matter in the sense that I don't have to be right next to that object that wind could actually be way over here and when it comes back around it's still doing the exact same thing right or I could take it and I could move it way up here and I can start back from the beginning it's still doing the same thing. So all that really matters is the strength and the direction of it. Where its physical placement is within the scene, it doesn't matter. What matters is that it's on the same layer as the soft body that you want to affect. Or if you're using cloth, it'd be the same way. They'd, they just need to be on the same layer. So you can control different effects. If you have different objects with different things going on, you can put wind and objects on different layers, and they can all be doing different things. All right, so I'll just... So I know it's there. So we'll go back and just we'll review that editing. So back in here, I'll go down to this first layer. I'll just set that down to, I'll type that in zero. And I'll press I while my mouse is hovered over that window. And then up here at 80, I'll change it to maybe 75. And I'll press I. And then up here, I'll make it 135. And you can go change these later. I right, love using up and down arrow keys to verify that they're all set, and they are. So I'll just come down here, press Alt A, and there's from the beginning. So actually, maybe this one doesn't need to be. This next one doesn't need to be so strong. Maybe it's picking it up too much. Forty, like that. Okay, Alt A didn't have time to fall. Well, I think you get the idea. You saw from the beginning on the previous animation, and it's exactly the same thing I was doing. So it kind of depends on the strength and all those things. And that's a lot of just trial and error to make it work right. All right. Well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.